Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review, and this is for The Battery. Now, The Battery is a film that my friend Mike sent me, OCP. It's a film that, it's a zombie film, but it's calling it a zombie film would kind of be misleading because the zombies are very much in the background. Uh, calling it more of a drama would work better. Because if you're going to this film expecting action and gore and you know, scares, you're not getting it. But I like this film. I thought this was a pretty good drama, with only with zombies in the background. And uh, I really liked it for that, the two leads. And pretty much, uh, it takes place after whatever happens, the zombie apocalypse, and you have these two guys who, you see they're kind of friends, they are used to be baseball players. Uh, one was the catcher, one was the pitcher. I think there's a term where the catcher and pitcher together are called the battery. I think that's the case, but I'm not a big baseball, you know, terminology. And I thought the two leads did a good job. I'm looking up these guys' names. Jeremy Gardner and Adam Cronheim. Uh, Jeremy Gardner plays Ben. Oh, he was actually the guy who directed it. And he wrote it, and he starred in it. I thought he did a pretty good job. Now this film only cost six thousand dollars. I thought they used that budget pretty damn well. But like Ben, Jeremy Garner, the guy who wrote and directed this, he's a guy with like a thick beard, and he's kind of a guy who who is willing to you know kill when he has to. And sometimes when he wants to, and he's sort of the rough and tumble guy. And then you have this other guy, Mickey, played by Adam Cronheim, who was also one of the producers, as well as the stars. He's a guy who, a little bit more of a romantic, you could say, uh, like they visit this place where his girlfriend used to be, try to see if she was there. A lot of times he hides out with his headphones, so he puts his headphones on, he turns on this music. And a lot of times he's trying to escape the world while the other guy Ben I just call him Ben and Mickey while Ben with the beard he's the one he's like you know I hate to break it to you but this is the here and now you might want to I know you want to escape out of here but this is how it really is and really the film is about these two guys relationship and a lot of the film is them traveling around the New England area and the woods and trees and you know pretty much going from A to B to C looking to see what they can find seeing if there's any zombies in there and pretty much try to figure out you know what to do next and how the the Ben character he doesn't want to stay in the house because you you get a little backstory where they're at this guy Mickey's place and they were stuck in there for like a couple months because zombies were all around them and it ended with Mickey's like I think his mom and dad and brother or something all getting killed so after that Ben doesn't want to ever want to stay in the house while well, Mickey you know one time gets fed up he's like you know what I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in the house I want that fucking bed and even like he doesn't kill the zombies Ben does and even Ben tries to get him to kill one because like he has to learn sometime to defend himself and he's like yeah maybe sometime but not today and a lot of times he escapes into his headphones until one time they get these uh, walkie talkies he find, put batteries in them and maybe that's another thing with the the title is because you know, the Mickey guy always put, you know, put batteries into his CD player because always listen to it I must admit, a lot of shitty songs. That's one thing I gotta admit. It's a lot of shitty songs. I mean, I didn't really care for any of the songs in the movie. Um, at least that's just my opinion. But I think that this is definitely a film I can see people being bored with. But I don't know. I thought the New England area, the way they shot, was well done. I, I like the two lead guys and them just trying to deal with the situation. It is more of a drama. And like I said, there's a point where they get these walkie-talkies and they're talking and someone else is on the frequency, including this girl named, I think, Annie. And I like this is actually a mention of Tremors. That's really cool. It's always nice to hear Tremors get referenced. And 
this sort of starts the sort of romantic side of Mickey, and even Ben's like, well, what? You think you're going to find her and maybe fall in love, and or she's going to be this rough and tumble girl, and um, then the Annie character on the walkie-talkie -talk -talk says, let it go. You need to let it go. This place isn't really what you think it is. You know, this refuge. And, like, the Ben guy, he's fine with just wandering around, but Mickey really wants a place to settle. Because, again, he's... He kind of wants the flip switch back on. The, the switch flipped back on. You know, everything to be normal again. But I pretty much ultimately learns that's not going to be the case because, you know, he's like, oh, no, come on, I really... You know, toss to her and she turns him down. And then Ben, and it might seem like a, a shitty thing to do, but I understood why. He leaves a bat in Mickey's room and he puts like a zombie in there. He's like, you gotta kill him, you gotta kill him, because he's gotta defend himself sometime, otherwise he's gonna get himself killed. And ultimately he does, he's got blood over himself. And that's pretty much after that where he realizes, okay, this is the world, how it really is. And then he starts, you know, changing you know, for the better. Where, you know, after the rejection from Annie and this thing, killing his first zombie. They start hanging out together even more, you know, playing baseball with fruit more. And uh, he starts listening to his headphones less. He's more in the moment. I really enjoy having fun until one day. Uh, they find this vehicle, and this guy tries to kill them, and they have to, you know, kill him instead. And then this girl comes by, and you find out that's Annie. And of course, Mickey he opens his mouth, and she shoots Ben in the in the leg. And she's like, you know, I told you guys, you need you know, this. Pl the place isn't really what you think it is. If I see you again, I'll kill you. Pretty much an ultra bitch, in heat. And they pretty much get in their car, and then when they the keys were thrown around, they couldn't find them. They are wait for daylight. And of course, by that time, the zombies pretty much trap them in the car. And the pretty much the third act is these two guys trapped in a car. And I don't know, I, I was kind of entertained by this, what they have to try to do to... Is it, it becomes less of a suspenseful scene, and this is on purpose, and more of... You know, they, they, these zombies are slow, and they, they can't really... They can't break in. So it's not like they're in danger of the zombies breaking in. It's like, you know, them the whole time as this car is rocking back and forth and, you know, hearing constant noises of the zombies and trying to take their mind off and try to figure out what to do and playing games and drinking and, you know, conserving water and uh, you know, trying, again, trying to Get to take their mind off their situation. I got some chuckles off a lot of the stuff going on. They even have a reference to Jaws. They even saying, "Show me the way to go home." I'm tired and I want to go to bed. That was a nice reference. Until you know, I don't know, probably twenty minutes or so, which I yeah I, I liked. Because, uh, you know, it's different. I mean, there's a lot of zombies that come out, zombie films that come out. I thought, you know, I know this is more of a drama and also has, a, I think, some funny stuff to it, some good sense of humor to it. And I thought the two leads did a good job, and I thought the photography of the New England uh, was well done. It's one of those, I really enjoyed the film. I really liked the movie. And you get to the ending where Mickey tries to go for it. And you have this scene that stays on Ben the whole time as sort of the suspense of, you know, is the guy going to make it, is the guy not, and Ben just waiting, 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 waiting until his friend comes back. But then, one, he doesn't have the keys, and two, he's been bit. So Ben has to kill his friend, even though his friend's begging, but he knows that his friend didn't get the keys, his friend's going to turn, and who knows how long they're going to wait in there anyway. So he's got to shoot his friend. And I like the active performance in this scene. I thought it was well done. And I like this moment where you know he gets this walkie-talkie. He's like, Annie, 
you hear me? Yeah, you can hear me, can you? And it talks about how, you know, how they got out before and this Mickey's family's place. You know, it was so simple. You know, one day they were on one side and we were able to get out on the other. It was just that simple. You know, if if I don't get out, I'll put a bullet in my head. But if I do get out, I'm gonna put a bullet in yours. Because she's really the reason why, you know, she killed that guy Mickey. Because she shot Ben in the leg, threw their keys away, didn't have to do that at all. But she was a bitch. And then if you keep watching through the end credits, you realize he did make it out. And, you know, the zombies are trailing him, but he's faster than them. And he's got the headphones now that his friend Mickey had. So now he's listening to the headphones. And you can see that, you know, you can pretty much guess where he's going to go. The bitch. I know I gave away the whole movie, but this is reviewing the whole movie. I really, I like that it wasn't a depressing ending. Well, I mean, in a way it is. I mean, it's sad, but it's, you know, someone made it. But it's one of those things that I thought, you know, I thought it was a good drama between these two guys, and they finally bond. And by the time they really, really bond with each other, this, you know, the shit hits the fan. And I, th I thought the whole scene in the car was a really interesting way to go. I thought it was, and the fact that it, it was ultimately like a just a sort of annoyance at a point where, you know, great, we're trapped in this car, these zombies can't get in, but. You know, the constant noises, and you know, at the point that I put one puts the headphones on, they not hear them, and even puts like curtains on the on the windows. I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really, I mean, it made it a bit different. It sort of a little, I wouldn't say surreal quality, but gave me a, a chuckle with it. But I liked the film as a drama. I thought the film was a good drama, with zombies in the background, and I thought as you know, a good little bits of sense of humor to it as well. And I just say I liked it. I just say I liked it. Again, I guess it was a 2012 film, October 13, 2012, video on demand, released June 4, 2013. Um, again, it's kind of hard to call it a horror film or a zombie film because it really isn't scary. I'm not even sure if it's ever meant to be scary. And, well, this person says it's best. It's not a zombie film for all tastes, but there's certainly a lot to like here. Is Ali? I mean, is, 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 they're right. It's not a zombie film for all tastes. I can see a lot of people going, nothing happens, it's fucking boring, and it's slow, and where's the gore, where's the action, where's the kills? But there's so many shitty fucking zombie night and other stuff that, uh, I thought this was well done. I mean, hell, my favorite is Dawn of the Dead. That's the best of both worlds with, from George Romero. And then, you know, Day of the Dead, that's fun. It has character stuff and gore, but... I thought this was a good one, the battery. Gore-wise, you don't really see much. But, uh, good drama with these two characters. I thought that, again, the acting from the two leads were good. And I thought it had some fun sense of humor to it as well. <laughs> this moment where he's like, what was the line? Like, fuck you. Fuck you to death. <laughs> I don't know, just the way he said it was pretty funny. But anyway, I, the battery, it's a film I definitely could say I liked. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.